What was that like growing up when your, your parents love you, they, they take care of you, but being that poverty stricken, uh -huh. you know, um, what was your frame of mind when you were younger? Before even we talk about Jiu Jitsu, it's just growing up. Uh -huh. but, uh -huh. but what was that like? Uh, you know, like, uh, I, like I was as a kid before Jiu Jitsu, like, I think like uh, the, my reference was my parents. And my parents was like, giving so much themselves to, to us. I used to see how much they was working to give me what I, not just what I want, but I also like uh, to, at least to supply what we need. So what, what we need was sometimes was more important. So if you have what we need, so it, they were supplying what we, we want. Was there any sense of envy or jealousy towards the other kids who are like, you know what, we're not well off, but we're in this well off environment? The kids over there was not, sometimes they was looking at me as a different. And then when I go to my school, my school was inside the, the community, the, the favela. So all my, all my friends in the school was people who live in the community, not me. I was living in the building. Right. So for those kids, I was kind of rich. I was not poor enough to be with them. So in the beginning, that's why I believe so much Jiu-Jitsu, because before Jiu-Jitsu, I was struggling to find myself because when I go to in my, in my place that I live, my friends, sometimes there was, you know, like for when, when we make when jokes, sometimes the joke was like, oh, you're not rich enough. When there was the other, what the group was, oh, you're not poor enough because you live in this place. And then like, and the Jiu Jitsu, when I was going to the school, training Jiu Jitsu, Everybody was the same thing. Everybody with the same gi, different belt. People doesn't, class, doesn't, doesn't put yourself as a different social, how much money you have, what, what color your skin, what religion you are. It's, a, it's just like, just like training Jiu Jitsu. And that's why the, 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 com, the, the community that I fit was through Jiu Jitsu. And this gives me so much confidence in Jiu Jitsu and I think the confidence was became, became because every day you win and you lose. Every day you win and you lose. Every sparring, you win the sparring. Every sparring, sometimes you lose. So winning, you lose, winning, you lose. You deal with, with loss and wins every day. So this gave me confidence enough to be myself as a kid. And then when I was going to the school, I was playing with the rich kids in my street, in my neighborhood. When they started the jokes, I was, I don't care. Because right now, I know my, my identity. So right. I knew, I already knew it, who, I, who I am. And then when you know who you are, you don't care about what people say. You don't care about people like a bully, your name is, or whatever he says, or whatever he gonna tell, because you know who you are, you know your potential, then you know like your, your life doesn't, you don't wanna get approved to nobody else, because now it's too late, now I learn. You didn't even wanna train in Jiu Jitsu because you wanted to train in stand up arts, right? Uh -huh. And the first person that taps you out is a female. Yes, yes. And this is like in the 90s. Yes. So this must have been a big shock yes. to get tapped by a female. Yes, I, I didn't quit the jiu-jitsu because I was so much ego, I was so much angry because, because I was not fitting those locations. You know, like I was going to one place, not fitting another place because I was expecting strike, so I, I remember like me, my brothers, my father watched Kung Fu movies, Bruce Lee, you know, movies. So when I heard like, oh, hey, I'm gonna put in the Kung Fu school. So my father thought it was Kung Fu or Karate. I say, okay, I wanna, I wanna go. I went there, I was grappling, I didn't like. And the, but what made me come back was because this girl, she beat me up. I, say, I came back home so frustrated. My parents didn't take me there. So my parents didn't see the training. I come back, he asked if I like it. I say, no, no, not really. And he said, oh, you're gonna quit? I say, no. Like, I think I always had a problem with quit. If you want me to do something as a kid, you just say, oh, you're not good enough. Or you, you quit. Right. So those was like, was giving me so much energy to prove that I can do it. So they say, no, I'm not gonna quit. I wanna, I never say why, but in my, in my mind, I would say, oh, I have to, you know, I had to pay back that girl before I stopped the Jiu Jitsu. I didn't like this, but I, I only stopped I'm gonna after. I'm going to get you back. Yes, but I could. So next day was the same thing. Next day, same thing. And then, but I was, like I said, like I was a smart kid too. Then I say, okay, 
if it works with her against me and I'm stronger than her, it's gonna work with me against my friends. And, and then I, 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 I'm not the biggest and the stronger from my group of friends, so this will help me. And, and beside this, the school I, I was having, in the, in the, in the jiu-jitsu, I was having a lot of fun. So you want to be able to control the distance more using your knee okay. because of your frame. So it's a, your frame. It's a knee shield. Okay. Yes. So working the balance to one side, you know, like to keep the, 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 the thing. You can work with your legs to have power to sweep. You can, or even the beginning when you, be, be, before when you're here, so you can start, I, I, I like so much to, to move the, the arms, to cross the arm, okay. because here, all the defense and attack, it's based in the keep the person in front of you. So once I'm in front of you, you're gonna protect yourself, you're gonna even attack me. But if I, if, I, if I cross your arm, so then you have to get out of this first. So if you're able from the close guard or open guard, that if you'll be able to control one hand and then across the arm, so the person on top, he need to respect the distance that you create right now. If you try to get close to me, you have no balance. Right. So you need, and then I can slowly move to, my, to the side to go to the back. I can move my leg to work the sweep. Once I control one of your arm, I control the way to go to the back. I control your balance because now you cannot put your hands in the ground. I can control to like to move myself, but if you if I'm doing your arm, whatever I go, I'm block. Whatever I move, I block. Whatever I try to skate, you hold me. So I think one of the key is the grips in the hands. That's I think that's my I think is the first thing. Okay. It's make your grip to control his hands because without the grip, he cannot attack. So that's a, and then from here, this, depending on what he move because it's reaction. So you can go to the back. If he tries to land his weight on top of me, so you can, you can move, you can sweep. Instead of just make the grip and open to spider guard, I'm still able between your arms. So the strong grip will help, we will, will win. But if you can able to cross the arm, doesn't matter how fast or how strong the person on top will be, my grip will, I don't need to be strong to make this, but now I, I'm controlling your power. Because right. uh, you cannot step, if you step back, if you, pull, you drag me with you to your back. Okay. If you try to land your body weight on top of me, you lose your balance to the side. What was the mentorship like from Homero Jacare? You know, like uh, I was very blessed and lucky to be Homero as a professor because <clears throat> he was a, uh, uh, I only, like sometimes, like you as a kid, you only figure out some stuff as you get more maturity and you can see the, the situation from a different perspective. Sure. So after I grow up, after I became coach, after I, you know, have more, more position in my team, so I can see how, how he was very, uh, like, smart, how he was very like uh, uh, important to, not to me, but to a lot of people. And then I was doing a lot of uh, conditional training with him. So he was, oh, let's go like running, biking and swimming. So those are the activities because he, he likes to compete the Ironman and he also, because we were living by the beach. So it's very natural to us to use this. And, <clears throat> but also his, uh, his education is in physical education. So, you can see he was using the concept as, a, as a, his knowledge in, in the school, in the college, his education, to develop his athletes. So program, training, you know, he, he was using all these, uh, uh, these as a concept to be, all our class was very divided by training stand-up when the time, nobody sometimes was training stand-up. So it was very physically when some, sometimes it's not a fox to some, somebody else. So back in the time, you can see the teams have a very specific game. So it's not everybody who was open guard and you have so many, even kids, like slam like the kids in the ground because it just part of, it's, it's allowed. And, but he was very technical and concerned about, no, let's posture up, like very fundamental, a lot of fundamentals. And I think the, this investment in his fundamental, this kid, that's what became like Fabio Gorgel, Alexandre Paiva, Roberto Trave, you know, like 
that was those was the first generation. The alliance. Yes, and then I was looking those guys. I was like, there was like a blue belt, you know, purple belt, and I was like, I still like a color belt as a kid, you know. The discipline behind the sport when making those guys have not just a big name, but also giving to us like as a kid over there, grow up with their inspiration. I want to be like them. You know, so if they do this, I can do this, this too. So they was giving experience, and then, and they have the next generation with Jamelão, Ratinho. So, and then you see yourself, okay, I'm in the next generation. And then, but was just part of the process. So, and he make this very smooth and very easy to everybody. I was lucky to have, like I say, like my father, like he's the very honest man that I see in all my life. Não, eu ficava alegre, né? Porque ele obedecia a mim e também obedecia ao jacaré, que ele não fazia também nada errado também, né? Porque nunca fizeram também, porque vivia junto comigo. E nos campeonatos que saía com o jacaré, eu confiava a ele, o jacaré levar eles, que eu não podia acompanhar eles. Quer dizer, eu me sentia feliz, né? E até hoje também, falo com o jacaré, agradeço a ele até hoje. Agradeço a, 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 a carreira. Opportunity. Opportunity. He was a very good example as a, to I have as a father. All, all the value that I learned as a man came from him. You know, the value, the value I, I was, Jacaré, I saw Jacaré was when I, I think I, as a kid, it was, everything is like I just play, it just play. Like it's not like a, you don't, like if you ask me, I was, oh, I want to be a militar, I want to be a police, I want to be a fire, uh, fireman. So that, those was my, you know, my, my, was, was considering to be as, as a kid. But when it became, uh, when I became, started blue to purple belt, actually the purple belt, and then when the responsibility started hitting, my father was taking me to, okay, so yeah, I, I got a job for you. And uh, I used to, I was, I was working even before, small job, small job, I always working, always doing something. But when he really think, okay, so now you're gonna stop a little bit jujitsu, you're gonna work. That's when my professor, Jacare, was very, really important because he came to me and said, why are you missing class? Because mm -hmm. I was, I wanna I want work with my father, so I'm gonna wash the, the, the building, I'm gonna work in, you know, the same as he does. That was, that was like uh, what, what, uh, what his job like does, like I'm gonna do it the same thing. I say, no, uh, how much money are you going to do it? I say, I'll do this money. I say, I give you this money for you teach jiu-jitsu. Mm. That was a click. I say, okay. So I can do what he does. And then, okay, okay, I can have this lifestyle. Because until this, in my mind, I only can live in Ipanema. It's a nice neighborhood. It's if I can work the same as my father work. Liu decided to, uh, to stop uh, training. And that happened with a lot of students. And as a coach, uh, my job is to uh, make them feel comfortable that they are going through a, a phase that Jiu-Jitsu can continue to be part of their life. And I strongly uh, encourage them to continue to train and uh, to go through these uh, phase that they have a doubt, so I should be uh, training or I should stop or I should do a different sport or I should help my family. So it's something that we try to, to help them and we try to be almost like a second father to them. I think uh, I strongly believe in Jiu Jitsu that if you continue regardless what you're gonna choose in life, Jiu-Jitsu only is going to help you to keep your focus and to have a better lifestyle. Não, porque quando eu botei Léo, eu pagava naquela época, pagava cinco, cinco mil reais, né? Aí foi andando, foi mais, depois entrou o Ricardo, aí seria 15 mil reais. Aí depois de 15, passou liando, aí era de, de cinco, passou, quando a taxa era cinco, a mensalidade passou para 10, aí seria 30, né? Aí foi aonde eu pensei de tirar eles, que eu falei, ó, agora vai, eu já estava pensando que ganhava para pouco, não tinha outro bico também, né? Aí, como eles eram bons no jiu-jitsu, né? Aí o Jacaré me chamou, 
Aí falou, Manel, falei um negócio com você. É, eu vou falar, tinha vez que eu dava, não dava os 30 reais, né? Dava 20, porque, porque não completava o dinheiro todo. Aí ele disse, olha, falei o seguinte, é, seus filhos são muito bons e ele, ele não pode sair de jiu-jitsu. Então, só o seguinte, você, a partir de agora, você não vai pagar nada. A minha, na minha rua tinha uma feira, né? Aquela na terça-feira. Só o dinheiro que você paga para mim, você compra de banana, que banana fortalece muito. <risos> você compra por menino e tá bom. Aí também toda terça-feira era um cachorro né? <risos> banana e coco também, que na né, cara falou: ah, compra que é alimentação das crianças. I was always like, I want to do something else. I want to, you know, I want to, I want to like not have limitation. I want to be able to do what other people can do. And then when I see he's open this opportunity, I say, hey. I can do this. I can, I can go teach in the morning class, you know, ride a bike, go to the beach, come back. <laughs> I can have a different lifestyle than my father. My father was working the whole day. I said, I can have a different lifestyle. So then, I, Jacare was always a mentor through sports, through a reference for me to uh, business and uh, sports, you know. And my father was, uh, was my, was my the value that I made make me be a man. So I was always knew, I really knew it, very clear for me, who's my father, who's my mentor. And then I learned, and then, and, and like, and I have no problem to say that, like, uh, and then when I understand this, I say, okay, so I need different mentors to different things that I want to experience in my life. And then when I moved to Sao Paulo, so Fabio Gorgel was very important because I learned so much about business. Because Jacare, He's a very good professor relationship. The way he talks to you, he's gonna make you be a world champion. Uh, Fabio Gurgel has a different, different approach. Here. So we have a very good business uh, program, you know, very like a uh, work, especially because Sao Paulo required this. It's and how to make it a career, period. right? Yes, and then uh, I was, okay, so I have to learn this too. So I was getting people that, uh, that I was, like, I like to say, when you know who you are and you know what's your purpose, what you want to do from your life, you can, you can take reference and then, and then learn what is, what's going to make you go straight to your, to, your, to your goal, you know. And of course, everybody will have a good thing and a bad thing, so, but, uh, but once you know where you're going, you, you also can decide, you also can see what is going to help and what's not going to help. That's why all the discipline behind the sport like I was very disciplined myself to the sport because I was very committed to, to my goal, to my life, to, because I knew that if I make good decisions, I'm gonna have, a, I'm gonna have a good results, I will help my family, and that was my goal. So now at this particular point, you have your dad, you have your mentor, and another financial, kind of like financial mentor. Here comes the news. You got to break off from Alliance. Uh -huh. Well, if you could somewhat relive, how did that make you feel in regards to, wow, I put in all my time here. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me I can't be with this group? What, what was that feeling like? You know, like, uh, I had this, this conversation was only five minutes. Because, uh, like I said, like, I think I, I understand pretty early, like, who I am, what I'm gonna do. And also was, I was, I think the life was helped me so much to, to some stuff you control, some you don't control, but everything you can do, it's uh, the react, you can control your reaction. In Jiu Jitsu, I was learning this through Jiu Jitsu all the time, you know? So sometimes just, you know, receive, digest, and, and then put that energy in something else, give it like, when, when, when that situation happened, for me, I was a kind of soldier all my life to my professor, you know? Right. So when he said, when he said, doesn't matter where you go, you're gonna be, I'm still, I'm always gonna be with you. So I don't care because of all my concern, it was to disrespect him. So all my concern was, I don't want to disrespect my coach. 
I don't care about all other guys because all other guys, it's, a, it's not my professor. I, it was, my, was my, my training partners, but Jacare was my concern. Because I grew up like I, back into like my value, my, the value that I learned in my home, you know, and then I believe so much. Like it's not about religion, but uh, but it's about like I, I really like the Jesus, like his the lifestyle. And when he said like uh, you have to honor your father and your mother, like uh, that's uh, that's authority. Like I, I I like this a lot. And when my concern was about like not to respect, not honor my coach, because for all the life I was loyal to him. When he was giving me like the rights to to live my life, be myself, and this is not gonna change what we have, I was okay with that. Because I know in my mind, even when I'm doing something else or be another team, so I knew like he never would change. He's gonna be my professor all my life. I'll, I'll honor him as much I can. The guys who were all young and they all had different egos. And at that time, I was already living in the U.S. I moved to the U.S. in 1994. And that episode, I believe, happened in 2000, 2001, something like that. So Fabio was running the team and being the leader of the alliance over there. He was against the guys competing the same weekend for a different uh, uh, federation. And the guys insisted that they could do on both. And they went on their own uh, and competed, and, and when they came back, uh, the relationship was never the same. So uh, Fabio decided to, of course, uh, continue with the alliance, like me and Alexandre Paiva. I was never going to like uh, uh, leave alliance, but the other guys, they decided to, uh, to move on because they didn't get along anymore. So it was or Fabio or the other guys. And I was in that position that I said, man, I'm gonna stay where I am. I'm not gonna go anywhere. But the guys that decided to go their own way, I tried everything to make things uh, 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 together, to get everybody together. But I also understood the fact that uh, they already made the decision. And being young and uh, different egos was going to be very hard to accommodate. And I saw the best thing to do was let them go and let them follow their own path in a good way. My mind at that particular point, I would be like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go rogue and Ronin. But you decide to now venture and form Braza uh -huh. with some friends and yes. some people you know. Yes. What was that like trying to get seven opinions, seven, eight opinions, oh, yeah. and, and trying to maneuver about the goal. Yeah, well, like, was like a lot of kids, you know, 20s, 20, like 23, uh, a lot of, like, uh, a lot of energy. But I was the high graduate, like, so people was looking at me to see, okay, so what you gonna do? So what do you, what you gonna do? What, what's the next step? So I felt this, I feel this pressure too. Okay, so what are you gonna do? And at that point, I always like, you know, like, in some point, I always like, oh, okay, so what? Like, I always like, make a lot of questions to myself. And I always say, oh, okay, what should I do? What should I do? And then back in the time, there were only three big teams was Alliance, was uh, Grace Barra, and also was Nova Union. And I was, I grew up competing so much with, against them. I cannot just knock the door to Gracie Barra and say, hey, I want to be a Gracie Barra, you know. What the jiu-jitsu back in the time was not open like today. Today you see people, people going to different academies, which is fine because they search for their goals. Sometimes the, the goals as a team is not like what the, 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 the athlete expect. So they move into different teams, you know, for the opportunity or for like, Whatever, but back at the time, no, it was, and then I cannot knock, go to Nova Union and say, hey, I want to be, I want to enjoy the team. Can I enjoy the team? I was competing with Shaolin for so much, you know, and then, and then I say, you know, like, um, I, 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 can, I think we can handle this. So I learned how to become a team. I, I learned how to become a leader. I learned how to, you know, to take care, like, uh, as a, 
because uh, when I look myself, I was building, like I was building to this and I, I never realized, but all my life in, in my Jiu Jitsu in Rio de Janeiro, all my life in Jiu Jitsu with, uh, so, and then and that's what gives me a lot of confidence because hey, I was, I was a trainee with the, with the best coach. I learned how to teach. All my life I was teaching. Since I was blue belt, I was teaching. I teaching kids, I teaching, I was teaching uh, uh, fundamental, I was teaching advanced, I was teaching competitive. So I teach all kinds of levels. So I know how to teach. And I was working a lot, like for three, four years with Fabio Gorgel, which a very like, for me, it was like a, the mentor in the, in the business. I know how to run the business. So I can handle this. And then I take the responsibility but of course, we was like a seven guys make the decision. So let's make something fair. And then let's make the decision. And it was hard because making so much people like uh, wants to give opinions, so much people wants to do this, so much people to have people who really commit me, the other half not commit me. And then like- Different goals. There are right? a lot of conflict. And I was in between, like I tried to handle. And then, uh, and then I was, for a couple of years, then I started getting tired of this because I don't think that was, uh, uh, that, was a, that was a healthy for me because besides this, I was in school, in the college doing physical therapy. I was having my own life too, you know? So uh, I, was, I even thought like, you know, how quit Jiu Jitsu, I would do just, uh, I wanna, you know, doing physical therapy, I'm gonna do something else. Cross my hand. Cross my hand. Don't forget the way. It is exactly. If you keep, if you push me to this side, yes, you go to the back. You see, if I don't give the back, I have to give my leg. Look how. As long as you keep your arm, look how balanced you are. Not no balance yet. Yeah. Well, this is a good balance, look. Wait for, I cross your hand. <laughs> as long as my arm, you between my arms, I'm in balance. When you cross, then like if you keep, if you let my arms here, the only thing you control is the distance. That's why I have this. I can get close, I can go here. But because here, I'm still able to, to fight space, you give it to me. So, but if you cross, when you control the distance, I'm still able to attack. Attack and defense, it's not, it's not about the distance. It's about my arms. Well, the first like, uh, school you opened, we opened in the United States was La Habra. La Habra was our first school. I opened La Habra and then we sent my brother, I was here by myself for three Kondi months. Is that Kondi No, La Habra is Lucas Leite. Okay. So that was the first school. And then this school was uh, how all the team became first. So the importance about La Habra and what yeah. you were doing, yeah. the plot points. Yeah, we have a two, like La Habra and this guy, Chris Franco. He was, was he's a Grace, uh, Carson Grace, black belt, uh, like, on, he owned this place, and he was, was uh, he's uh, close to Vitor Belfort. So I met him through Vitor Belfort because I was coaching Vitor Belfort in MMA. That when he take the belt to Randy Couture back in the time, so the title belt. And <clears throat> so, so he has a school, and the school was have a nobody in teaching Jiu Jitsu. So I see the opportunity. Once, uh, once the jiu-jitsu was getting so popular in the U.S. to have a school overseas. So I make a deal with him, I say, I take care of this school. But then I saw the opportunity, okay, look, U.S. has a big market. We have to supply those academies. We have, that's the place that we should grow up the jiu-jitsu. So I start like seeing our, our athletes who take opportunity. And then like, the opportunity is not gonna help, it's not gonna go to you if you don't have no capacity. The people who is a black belt learn English and 
and a, responsi a responsibility, those are the guys who are gonna go. So then everybody started like uh, learning Jiu-Jitsu, uh, English, and, and to get opportunities to come to US. I remember La Habra, and then we using so much Chris Franco's house to be our, our HQ. Yeah, HQ, the, the HQ right. was in his house. It was me, Lucas, uh, Mendes brother, I think there was like blue belt, like change it for the purple belt. They're everybody in the same room, sharing the room. We're also with uh, uh, Ari Faria, so all young kids, you know. So, and, but La Habra was like the point that we're meeting so many people, so much people. You know, th those people that was, uh, that are uh, like, uh, they, those people that was open opportunities to, 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 through Jiu Jitsu, you know, like uh, a lot of uh, school owner brand, like, uh, like a sports brand. So it was, I was, I, I was having access to so many people uh, as a brand, as a, as an investor, also as a school. And then we was giving, I was giving opportunity to those people that was more close to me, was showing more responsibility. And then I got caught in the, in the, in the, in the, I got the part. Very good. Between the legs. Yes. It's always a, a balance between grips, pushing and kicks. So if you you have a hands and legs, you everything pushing, uh -huh. I'm gonna keep the distance, I'm gonna move away. If everything pull me, I'm gonna be in your guard. So good guard, balance is about grips to make you pull and and push it. So pull a combination between pull and and push it. Yes. No, no, for this one, this is just to make you stretch out. Yeah, but you see, point. my hand's still able to work. So always control one of my hand. Don't try to control both, but control at least one hand, then I cannot attack. Mm -hmm. I can only attack one side, but one side will be always, always the weakness. So okay. the side you control is the side you're gonna be losing, making lose my balance, attacking to triangle or platter, but that's it. In a diplomatic and good way, you got deported, right? Nothing against <laughs> that you did illegally. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. So one thing is what was going through your mind when you had to go back, and then you're coaching people from Brazil, watching them compete in the US. Yeah. What was well, that like? It was tough, it was tough. You know, like a get a deported was like, or something like a, come on. Like it's like a, you see sometimes, like you see like the life hit you so hard. But again, like, uh, but I think the life hit me so hard before. There was only one more time I would say, okay, phew, I will handle this. But I hope I handle it the good way, you know, like, it, because, you know, you, I always knew that I can handle the thing, you know. And I think, like, the deport was, like, very, like, uh, uh, unhealthy for my team, but also make us be, like, like a very good unite group. Because when this happened, everybody was together. When I say together, we was a brother. And the, the team was working very good. We training in Sao Paulo. So we was training in Brazil, going to competitions. And when this happened, so I was, uh, I was not allowed to be in US for three years. You know? It's a long time. Yeah. And so, and that I, during the interview, I was asking, I said, well, take the whole day, you know, and then they making questions, 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 we went to different rooms, they fingerprint, picture, Interpol, asking, making different questions. In the end of the day, uh, I asked, I said, okay, so what, but uh, I have been answered all the questions, but I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Why I cannot get in the United States? He said, oh, 
uh, I have the I have the restriction for you don't let you get in. But as I can see, it's a uh, you have too much qualification. I say, come on, like <laughs> this doesn't make sense. Right. Like uh, if I don't have a qualification, I understand. But if I have too much qualification, like when I apply for the visa, I I don't choose I don't choose the visa. I tell who I am, what's what I'm gonna do in U.S. And then you give me the visa. The reason I'm here, it's pretty clear. So all the, all the questions was asking me, because they was asking about some tournament, they was asking some like uh, uh, internet, they was asking some stuff. I said, I was answer. And you guys, and you guys uh, have a proof of that. So I don't know, like I don't know what was your guys' concern, but like, that, that no, like you need to give me an answer. And he, he didn't give me. He just say, oh, you're gonna go back to Brazil and they're gonna give you the answer. But when I back to Brazil, I was applying over and over again and not applying to the visa. I, I, wanna, I wanna answer, I wanna answer. They never give me the answers. Which is sometimes worse. Yes. They might as well lie to you. Because it uh, take a lot. Because uh, it's not discipline. Like uh, I have kids. When I, I discipline my kids, I tell, oh, look, you did this wrong. Because this wrong, you're gonna make this. So they didn't make it. They didn't show me what's wrong. They didn't show me anything. They didn't say, oh, tsk, you're not allowed. Why? You're gonna have your answer in Brazil. In Brazil, the, the consul, like, they wants to listen. They wants to talk to me. They're not even, like, accept my application. After three years, I got an application. And then I came back, and they go, they're gonna start the interview. I say, no, no, I'm not here. I want here to interview. I wanna know what's happening. You know, because you guys never give me an answer, and this cost me so much. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna come See my foot, control the gesture. I don't want to get too close to this, and that's why I lock. Oh, okay. I have this, and I control the gesture. <laughs> See, instead, yeah, go to my my hand, my hand. Oh. My hand is the one that keep you here. So choose one side and cross my arm. Always you lose your balance, two or one. Two arms will be stronger than one. If you go here, if you go two hands, no, if you go here, mm -hmm. like, like spider control. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm stronger than you. Sure. But if you go two or one, there's no way. Now you're gonna be stronger than one hand. So drag, pull, drag my hand and cross my arm. Okay, yes. And then fight, exactly. Sometimes when I lose my balance, I lose my butt, so I fight to, to protect myself, it's war. So I give it up to, 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 uh, to, to be in the head and protect myself. Okay. But if I try to, if I'm in the, in, in the dangerous situation, sometimes I try to fight, to fight. When I lose, I lose my balance and I lose my energy and I lose more points. Sometimes it's better if you, okay, consider that you lose and you set up your guard, your attack. Okay. But be, being in the position to attack is really important. Like, and that's, a, that's the, the name, the checkmate, because they're playing chess. Even when you defense, you should be able to attack. All your defense is attacking. I feel like, Professor, I, I, I'm at a stage where I still don't know when the position is lost, so I'm forcing to hold the position when I should just let go, like what you're doing. It's like, you know, if, you, if I have your leg, you just put me in your guard, I still... Yeah, let's say like, a, if it, every... Like you need, you need to manage the conflict. So if, you're, if you feel stronger than the other person, you keep. If you feel weak than the other person, find something that gives you strong. If you're in between, you have to decide, should I keep fighting for their power? Or like that's, a, that's, a, that, that's when you, you have to see, like, because all the positions like, you control the person, or you under control, or nobody control. 
when nobody control, you have to see how for each side this position is going. It's going to good position to you, it's going to bad position to you. Because if it goes too bad, you need to decide to sometimes give something back and then and then take the attack again. Then, then you just try to fight until the end, and then the person is going to take it down anyways, and then they're going to control you. Because I was not allowed to be United States. World competition was United States. So what I was doing as a, as a, as a, as a leader, what I have to do, it's a, I move myself, like, because I cannot go to US, okay, let's focus in Europe. We was going to, I was going myself to Europe. I was exploring Europe. I was going to the place that people doesn't want to go. I, in, be, in these three years, I make uh, Scandinavia became one of the big potential in, 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 in Jiu-Jitsu. We develop uh, uh, England, we develop Turkey. We start developing a lot of, a lot of places in, in Europe. And then we make immigrations to Asia. So, and, and, and the whole Jiu-Jitsu community only focusing U.S., U.S., U.S. Because I was blocking U.S., I went to other direction. But I have people going to, to, to U.S., Kavaka, André Galvão, uh, everybody else. Lucas Leite, he was already living here. So I was training those guys to be the, to be the Leo, to be the leader. Those three years do not be in the United States. That's where they split my team because I was teaching, I was telling them what they should do when they come to the United States, how they organize the team, how they do. I have to put people in my position because I was not the guy who was traveling. I was not the guy who can talk and everybody can listen. So I was using Kavak, I was using some of those guys that, are, that, are, that have, a good, uh, have a position, the team was close to me to go to the United States and be, and be the coach, be the coach that I cannot be because I am not allowed to be in the United States. Would you uh, be okay to showing the audience that torso control when you flip people? Yes. That, that logo. Yes. Uh, you. Yes. Uh, just so I can. Yes. Uh, not so much teach me because it's going to take a while for me to learn the technique. But no, actually, you, like it's pretty easy. It so the story behind, do you know the story behind? No, that? no, please, please enlighten The story behind that, I was losing the fight. Okay. So two points. I took the guys back, but he took me down. When you take me down, it was like, a, you know, like the mo movie when you freeze the moment, poof, everything goes to your mind. It was the first words competition. I was like, oh my God, I have been through all this discipline. I have been through all this to lose the fight that way. Because it was like last minute. I take his back, I saw myself, <laughs> I'm in the back. Now it's time for, I take the points, because I, I get the points, I win the fight. And then when I take the back, it's time when I, when I body lock, he take me down, and then when I was going, I say, oh my God, I don't believe I'll lose the, my opportunities to win the fight. I said, when I lose, when I get that, I say, I wanna bring him with me. And then I squeeze more, instead of open, everybody open, and so I bring him with me, and then he flip with me. And then I make the hook, and then I score four, he scored, he was with two, and then I win the fight. After the competition, after that fight, everybody, oh my God, what a move you did. Now, what, uh, who did you show you? How did you do this? You know, for me, I was like, it just was, a, was something for that- For the moment. Yeah, I said, no, that was a very good technique. I've been doing this a lot. No, I cannot say that, I have to now. Oh yeah, no, it's a good position. I have been doing this a lot. But the truth was, wasn't that. But I went to the academy and I practiced. I said, well, I want to find a technique behind that move. And then, and then I find the technique, and the technique, it's, uh, it's no secret, you know, like, uh, actually, if you grab the lapels, we will help the person the body, it just wants to hug. Right. But I don't want to hug your hip, I want to hug your torso, you're right. Yeah, and, and I want to keep the mount position first, mm -hmm. because, and like, when people turn, there are a lot of concern about the neck. Right. So when I, when, when I go, it's like, I, first, nobody make this piece, everybody, everybody keep their head down, Everybody keep the head down, which is help. And then I put also my head down to the side because because I, it keeps safe. Right. So I walk. So when I move myself to the back, I bring the person with me because my hand is locking hands to hand. So but when I put the pressure, so I put the pressure in the neck. Uh -huh. So the person have to roll because when you put the pressure, they have to roll. Ah, oh, okay. Because. Because I, I'm so tight to the upper body that I put the pressure in your neck. Could you flip me? 
Yeah, so my concern was about your neck. Well, well just say. which side are, are, we, are you going to flip me? This no, side? I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the pressure here. Then you, we, we both will roll forward. Ah, OK. But you can do on me, because. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes. That's well, <laughs> just hold, hold. Yes, tight. Yeah. Keep your elbow in your in my, in my armpit. Good. Like I'm not gonna diff. Nobody defends this way. Everybody make this way. Right. So then you're gonna mount first. Okay. So when you mount, then now I can see. Look. Keep your hand. No, no hooks. No okay. hooks. Just mount. Keep. Put your hand as lift. Touch. Try touching my chin with your hand. Okay. Yes. Very good. You see, you control my upper body. So put your head in one side. To roll. No, no, not on the head. Choose one side. Okay. Exactly. One side. Don't touch your head on the ground. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then don't try to roll. Just make keep walking. So keep walking because when you roll, you're gonna take me with you. Ah. Uh, okay. so and then when I came back, we have a big meeting, and that's when we break. And then we break. Actually, like a Braza break. Seeing three teams was with uh, Atos, and uh, also breaks with uh, uh, Zenit. So Kavaka and Robert. Robert was already uh, was already out, but Kavaka was with Robert, and then Ramon, Andre Galvão. And Mendes was just a, was kind of kids. It's still like a, was they were. I think there was a brown belt, beginning the black belt, but also the uh, Frazato. So we break in in three teams, and this. Uh, and the, what I can see this, maybe because I, I can see this for two points. Maybe one, because for three years, everybody was training with me in Sao Paulo, and they was going to U.S., and I cannot, I cannot be the leader in U.S., I cannot. And, and even when you have Lucas, my brother, Punch, even when you have a black belt that can, they can do, so we don't, we, we, we are not organized the, this way. So I was using, because at our biggest athlete was in Sao Paulo, Cavaca was traveling with the, all the competitors to, 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 to US to compete. And he was the guy who was have taken more responsibility. The reason they break, because they start seeing opportunity, different opportunity that I can see. Because the way he w they wants to manage the affiliation, the way they wants to manage the teams, academies, it's not the way that I can see. So I was, I, for all my life, I was like soldier. And then I learned how to be a, a, a leader. So I want to be able to everybody learn that you as a professor, you also can be a leader. You don't have to be slave. You don't have to be under nobody else. You know, my concept, it was okay. So I will teach you how to you be a professor. I will teach you how to be a very big potential. And it would be your decisions to stay with us because we together, we are strong. So, but we're not as strong when, that strong when we split. So, but uh, our, all, my, all my commitment is to teach professors to be, to, to uh, they understand who, who they are, who they can be. But some people, when they know who they are and how strong they can be, they just decide, oh, you know, I want to be by myself. Because maybe I'm going to have more opportunities, maybe because I'm going to have more money. And I respect the reason they see it. But, and this never changed the way the checkmate was, uh, was doing. Because that's when I, that I, when I became the checkmate, I said, the, when this break, I take the opportunity, so also the brass, I take the opportunity to say, look, checkmate, we be family value. You know, like, I don't, I don't care about be the biggest team. I don't care to be the best team. I want a people who I can trust, you know. I don't want to, I want to build the, and the way you will build this, we cannot put our value in money. We cannot put the value in opportunities. So I will teach people how to do themselves, how to be independent. And the decisions to be together will be because, because the friendship, because the appreciation, because the, because of the, we want to share, wants to be together. And, and then some guys stay and the few guys was out, you know? And now as I know, like, the, like those are the best thing that happens 
because instead of see the biggest team, and maybe it would be the strongest team, but it's not going to be the family community that we have right now. There's a big difference with Team Czech, Matt, versus a lot of teams, because you have a stable of champions. How different are you with the temperament when you're training or mentoring a competitor who's a champion versus just like a student who's like a soulful jujitero, you know? The difference between coach there, you know, actually, I don't see different because I see, I see commitment, you know, like the people who can only go three times a week, they commit me to go to three times a week. Sometimes they commit me so high than the guy who are athletes, they go every day. So, and I believe that Jiu Jitsu is a lot of, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of, uh, like honest, like you discipline. So that's what I, that's what happened with me. Cause I grew up with a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of other competitors that was, that was not disciplined the, the same I was. But later I was getting results, different results that they, they getting. So Jiu Jitsu is the same thing. And then I teach, I teach Jiu Jitsu the same way, but you put like the way they commit themselves like it's a different way. The way the fundamental class would be the same thing for everybody. Advanced class would be to everybody. Competition class, you'll be at the same bar. But you can choose how, like I tell the guys, like checkmate is a team of opportunity, you know? So, because I don't believe that I can be on your side yelling, telling what to do, coaching as much. I'm gonna lose, lose my voice to tell what to do. But if you don't do it, if you don't, it's not part of your commitment, to do something that, are, that are you, something you believe, that is not gonna work. So it's more how committed you are. Like show commitment, show discipline, I'm gonna give you the best results. Bushesha is the champion that he is. Not just, it's not because me and the team, it's because he's very high commitment. And he, but this commitment, when meet the right person around you, make you be Bushesha like commitment and coaching is very important because like I and I try to I try to extract to you your best. I want to make my commitment to make you give your best. So and if you want if your commitment is just training jiu jitsu as fun, you're going to have fun. You're going to laugh every class. If you want to train jiu jitsu to be to succeed as a professor or instructor, we were gonna give you resource to be the best instructor, you know, to understand what's the level of the instruction we have, to learn how to teach, how to build a program, how to see like uh, which individual they want, you know, as strategy, as uh, everything. If your commitment is to be the best jiu-jitsu fighter, if it wants to pay the price, because it's pretty hard price. So I promise that you're gonna be a world champion because we have the resource I know how to do it, but the commitment is the be, will be the key to be the successful. How committed you are, how, how much that you really want to pay the price. Because some people want to pay the price when they find out how, how, how expensive it is, they quit. Some people pay the price to, to, to achieve one time. Some people is like Bushesha, they not, they're not just happy to achieve, they want to keep, you know? And regardless to make this, it's, it's a lot of pressure on him, but sometimes I have no idea how much pressure is on me because I'm the coach. So, so I, I, like, uh, I concern so much about, because that's my personality. I concern so much about who I have under my umbrella. And then I'm, I'm taking care of every one of my students as like uh, I take care of my son. Do you think jujitsu is going to be as big as like, let's say soccer or like professional basketball? Depending on what perspective you see, we are big on the, all the sports. So we are the sport that changes so many people's life. We are the sport who gives so many people opportunities to travel in the world. We are the sport who make, uh, who make a lot of people laugh. Maybe you're not the sport that making so much money as other sports. But sometimes money can help, sometimes money can just be a problem. You know, like, I think like, of course, as a, as a coach, as a, you know, I would like to see the jiu-jitsu take those kind of sponsor, take those kind of opportunities to, to spread the word, 
you know, with their way. But we, I think we're big enough to make people happy, to make people change their life, to make people, like, uh, fight, like, not looking to any circumstance. You step on the mat, you don't care religion, color, uh, sexuality, or whatever. You don't care. You only want to learn Jiu-Jitsu. wants to train Jiu-Jitsu. That's all care. And uh, honestly, I don't see so much sports. I don't see so much of the sport that put together a group that's so different. Society uh, and uh, or any, any like with all difference of uh, religion or society and they, they have fun at the same time and connect to people. That's I think is a beautiful jiu-jitsu. And then I learned this breaking all my limitation. Like as a kid, I was, I was, I was just taught that I was one thing and jiu-jitsu was show me that uh, that's giving me confidence enough to once I put my gi, it was like, uh, it's like be myself, speak, you know, like I was, I was able to travel, I was able to break a lot of limitation that I, 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 was, I was limited as a kid. Awesome. Professor Leo, thank you so much. Welcome. Appreciate Welcome. it, man. Of thank you, thank yeah. you.